Hi guys, I'm Sean, this is Alyssa, Gus, Gus is, is in our hearts, hearts and, and this is Internet Rabbit Hole Daily! Uh, and we are back reacting to something that you guys have been asking for since we started this channel. I can't count how many people mm -hmm. have Instagrammed us or written in the comments. They've said, check out Vox's How This Border Transformed a Subcontinent, India, India and Pakistan. Pakistan. And so, so we're finally doing that. So sorry, guys. You know, we mm -hmm. are just like overwhelmed with the amount of uh, requests that we get on a daily basis. We do our best to cover off on all of them, yeah. but uh, it is a challenge. Now with this one, so many people asked us for us. We couldn't ignore it anymore. Not that we were, uh, but we're ready to check it out mm -hmm. and share our reaction so with you guys. let's get into this. Oh, sorry. I was going to put it down. Okay, it's 720. All right. We'll oh, beautiful. I haven't actually seen an overhead shot like that before. Of the Golden Temple? Yeah. That's awesome. There's like four temples all around. One, two, three, four, and then wow. the golden ones in the middle. Lovely. Wow. Well. This is the golden temple. People come here from all over the world to bathe in its waters, to look at the holy book that is inside of this middle golden temple, and to just experience the holiness of this place. This place is the epicenter of Sikhism. It sits right what? here in what northern was on India, head? I don't a city know. called Amritsar. Close by, there's another important Sikh site called Katarpur. It was established by the founder of Sikhism oh. 500 years ago. It's the Ooh, place where he spent the last mm -hmm. years of his life, and it is the second holiest place. Now, I wanted to let you guys know that I am learning a lot more about the gurus. Um, I've been listening to a podcast that's available on Audible. And so right now, I well, I, basically, we're getting into the second guru right now, but I'm definitely uh, learning a lot more. Uh, and so I'm really keen to sort of fill in all the gaps here. So I'm starting to sort of understand the references a bit more. In Sikhism. For centuries, Sikhs have been able to make pilgrimage between these two sites, to move freely throughout their heartland. But in 1947, a British lawyer drew a border here, turning what had been British India into two new countries, India and Pakistan. A British lawyer. Call it the most My goodness. Because they were both colon... Well, Pakistan wasn't colonized. Well, they, they too, would have been... Well, remember, they were, one, they were once just one, right? And then someone drew right. a line and uh, decided... Oh, so it was the... The British people, the, they made the division. Yeah, it sounds like some, hmm. it, and with, uh, from what I can tell, just hmm. sort of without any real care. I can only call it the most sort of bizarre lines which were ever drawn across a map. Wow. It went right here with the Golden Temple on one side. Yeah, why would they Katarpur do that? On the other. Thanks to this border, Sikhs in India are now cut off from their holy site. Unreal. Yes. So many come here to a platform that the border patrol set up. Hmm. <sighs> oh, they don't charge people, do they? No, they can look at it. That's ridiculous. Oh, the platform looks across the border, where with the help of telescopes, Sikhs can look at their holy place, just three or four what? kilometers away. Are they going to go into why they did that? I hope. Yeah, it sounds like it was like a very arbitrary decision, right? I hope right? they go into like why. It yeah. says how this border transformed the subcontinent, but yeah. I want to know why. We, we might have to watch a separate video to yeah. find out who is this lawyer and how the hell did he decide Just one to, guy? How did he have get this much power? I don't know. In addition to cutting off communities from their sacred sites, this border separated families, cut across rivers, forests, farms, railroad tracks. Today, this border is heavily fortified with nearly oh, all wow. 3,000 plus kilometers fenced. Wow. It's, it's lit so well that you can see it from- Whoa! Space. I had no idea and barely anything or anyone crosses over it. When we talk about the drawing of the line, what was the most painful was the division of families which took place. And that is a very big reality. 
This is the story of a violent separation, one of the most traumatic events of the no kidding. century. It's the story of how a hastily drawn line on a map separated one people into two. Uh, this is a horror story. What we saw was a town soaked with the stench of death. In the trail of murder and arson come the refugees. Their suffering is the new tragedy of India. Many will never reach their new land. These are the things that are setting the hearts burning on either side of the line. The sun is setting and I'm walking along one of the oldest roads in Asia, one that used to connect this region. But today, a border runs through it. Mm. And instead of connection and trade, what you see here is this. Jeez, Louise, eh? There's barbed wire, there's fences, there are officers everywhere. And yet, there's also ice cream and popcorn mm. and paraphernalia. Mm. This feels like a sporting event. What is going on? You can buy keychains of machine guns. What? Seems like a, a site for people to congregate these days, but but uh, why they're congregating, I'm not sure yet. Thousands of spectators file in, filling this stadium that looks down on the border. On the other side, Pakistanis are doing the same. Hmm. Are they doing a special event? Yeah, from it sounds. Side it looks like side? it. Yeah, it looks like it. Then both oh. sides start their different show. Two hours of chanting and dancing. Oh. Is this thing Hindustan? Is that? Then the finale, a face-off between the two sides. Oh. Oh wow! They're opening the uh... border. Yeah, and they're just staring at each other there. <gasps> in this coordinated choreography. Oh wow. Very similar sort of regalia, but different colors mm. from what I can tell. And it all ends with the lowering of each flag and the closing of this gate. Huh. So mysterious. This bizarre border show plays out every evening. Every evening? But this ceremony, wow. this fence, this intense nationalism, what? if you rewind just a little in time, none of this existed. The British controlled parts of India for nearly 200 years, but by 1947, a strong movement of independence was swelling across the subcontinent. While back in Britain, the country was in massive debt after fighting World War II and didn't have the resources to hold on to their colony. Uh, so they started making plans to leave India. Sort of leaving them high and dry. A proper transfer of power would probably take around five years. But when the British leader in charge arrived in early 1947, he hastily decided to shrink their exit timeline. And so- Wait, of India? Are those like royal people of India or something? L Lord, <sighs> ugh. Mount Batten, I've heard that before, but uh, once again, we're Kate. ignorant when it comes to history, guys. I, I've had well, a few people say, these guys are idiots. They shouldn't be not... reacting to this. Well, people are asking us to react to it. Well, How else are you supposed to learn? These people aren't that important. They're just people. Yeah. They're put on a fake pedestal. I don't, stupid I don't royalty. know the history Sorry, here. but the monarchy just triggers me. Yeah, I know. Triggers me. Italy decided to shrink their exit timeline. Wow. And so what needed five years would now need to be done in just four months. What? No wonder the line was hastily Wait, drawn. They had to because they were going in debt. They were like, oh, we need to get out of here right now. It sounds That's like what it. That's what it was. Yeah, we were seeing some rewind it a bit. the subcontinent. Well, back in Britain, the country was in massive debt after fighting World War II. And Winston and Churchill there. Resources to hold on to their colony. And then we see so Gandhi coming up. plans to leave India. Mm -hmm. British There's officials Gandhi. thought that a proper transfer of power would probably take around five years. But when the British leader in charge arrived in early 1947, so that must be the British leader, Viceroy of India. Their exit timeline. And so what needed five years would now need to be done in just four months. 
British India was to be split into two independent nations, <sighs> a mostly Muslim Pakistan and a Hindu majority, but officially secular. So they're trying to insinuate that like the Brits are like, oh, if we're going to like leave India alone now, we have to separate it I, into you know, different the, countries. They haven't, I, as far as I can tell, they haven't really explained isn't the thought that process up, here But yet, isn't that up so. to India to decide? You would you would think right, but uh, obviously they've been you know occupied and uh, they're going to do what they want. It sounds like India to do the actual drawing of the border. The British brought in a lawyer from London. He arrived the month before the British were supposed to leave India. He hadn't been to British India before and didn't know much about the region. <gasps> yeah, obviously didn't know much about the region. He they drew just, a line right between two yeah. holy sites. They just bring in Joe Blow. Yeah, just like oh, just we unreal. hired a guy. Yeah. Who knows nothing no idea yeah. Yeah. about India. No idea about Indian geography. No idea about Indian politics. And yet he was the one drawing the lines on the map that would affect millions of lives. During his visit, this British lawyer looked at maps and census data, mm. focusing on the maps that showed religious identity ah. in India. India has a wide variety of religions, and based on these census maps, you can see that people of all religions lived amongst each other all over the region. Mm. Mm. Including Christians, which people maybe just, don't always think I about. I want to know why did they think they needed to make it in two different countries? Why did they have to separate it at well, all? Well, they're explaining that right now, I believe. No, they're not. They're just I, saying well, how th the line got drawn. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think it's... Okay. This lawyer looked at individual districts, putting any district that had a Muslim majority population into the new country of Pakistan, while Hindu and Sikh majority districts would be kept within India. Based on this method, the lawyer began to see what a border might look like. Mm. He only had five weeks to do this. He later wrote that it would have taken years to settle on a proper boundary. And that's because this method of drawing the line conceals that within these districts, there were sizable communities of all religions that had been living side by side for centuries, all throughout India. August 15th, 1947, Independence Day for India and Pakistan, but Gandhi is not present. Why the celebration? The British lawyer left that day. He would never return to India again. Two days after independence, the borders were made public, prompting more than 14 yeah, million. That's unreal. Did they know that that's the borders? Unreal. They knew. Did they know the borders were going to be a thing? It said they were made public. Yeah. So, so they it didn't tell them like ahead the of time. People were were sort of caught off guard, or yeah. something was said like, "Hey, we're going to split you guys up," but they didn't quite know exactly how. And once they found this out, mm -hmm. 14 million people needed to uh, leave their homes. Unbelievable. Wait. Because they were in well, the middle of the border well, area? No, it could be, for example, they just showed a, an example on the map there where you had one jurisdiction, mm -hmm. which was, say, 61% Muslim, but um, there was a lot of other faiths there as well, too. Maybe mm -hmm. they felt that after the that was made a Muslim-majority area that they needed to move on to the other side. I'm they not really sure. They literally decided which side people... It's, wow. Their homes, their lives, for what was now their side of the border. Mm. We were told that you have to cross the border, India. Wow. A partition survivor. Hindus and Sikhs from Pakistan moved into India, and many Muslims in India moved into the new Pakistan. Yeah. These were people who were indeed forced to uh, lose their entire what? lose their memories. Because I guess you don't, there's no time. They can't like sell their house or... It, it sounds like really it happened sell very quickly. Houses yeah. as much back then. You kind of build a house and you stay well, in it the, too. the thing that I thought of too is how deeply connected... Now we know more about uh, maybe the Sikh faith than some of the other faiths, but we are learning, um, is how deeply mm -hmm. connected the land is to the people and how it's like their mother. Mm -hmm. And so to have to leave that and, and to not only have to leave, but to leave hastily... And it's it's just a, a absolute tragedy. Mm -hmm. The things they saw. It was one of the largest forced migrations of people ever, and it was chaos. A chaos that led to widespread, unspeakable violence. <sighs> Cities on fire. Sexual Ugh. violence against women. Trains full of dead bodies. The survivors I talked to were just children when all of this happened. Ah, uh, there was a lot of fear. 
Well, why were they killing each other? Well, I think I think there might have been a fear that uh, this was now uh, the Muslim side and this was now the Sikh and Hindu side. And if you were on the other side and you weren't part of the majority, that you might be uh, in, in some trouble. Mm. That's the sense I'm getting. I don't know. You guys will let us know. The division of the subcontinent became known as the Partition of India, a phrase synonymous with trauma fueled by the reckless mismanagement of an imperial power. I'm in a small village right near the border on the Indian side that used to be a Muslim community. Before. Oh, very interesting. And in the middle of town is this shrine where residents would conduct ornate Muslim burial practices on these graves. Look at the original maps that the British drew up when they were trying to draw this line. This town was actually in Pakistan in most of the maps. But in the end, the British lawyer decided to draw the line here. Oh, why? The people here discovered that they were now a part of the new country of India. And so many of them fled mm -hmm. just across the border to the new state of Pakistan. And they left this place empty. Mm. Yeah, so it was uh, but just holy sites on either side that were... For the new Pakistan, Hindus and Sikhs from Pakistan were coming across into India, and some ended up here. It's just weird. It's like if Britain didn't separate it while they were ruling it, why now? Why when they're Yeah, leaving? why when they're on their like, way out? You, it's like, they hey, were going to... If they thought, like, oh, we're going to organize this and divide it up or whatever into more, I guess, like-minded people or something, even though they were all living amongst each other... Anyways, with different religions, it's wow. like, why did they do it on the, during their exit? Well, no doubt it comes down to money, power, control. There's something going on. I, I just don't know how it translates. Clearly, to it was things. in their best interest, right? And and so we need to, to figure out why that is. Yeah, yeah got, I don't know. For, for Britain, it was in their best interest, right? Hmm. Oh, so they got to transfer. That now live in this community have taken it upon themselves to continue yeah it looks like they're the respecting the site this community mm. was based off of i noticed they flat fresh uh, arrangements and such maintain mm. these graves and these symbols even though they don't necessarily pertain to their own oh religion. wow mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is a sign of respect of common identity in spite of the border but this is just one side of the story. The subcontinent echoes and shudders to the sounds of a full-scale, undeclared war. Within just a few months of drawing this border, India and Pakistan were fighting an all-out war. Wow. One that centered Within on months? this region in the north, mm. which both sides claim as uh. their own. The new countries would fight several more wars over the years. A border fence would eventually fortify the majority of this boundary, and both countries would acquire nuclear weapons, turning up the tensions and deepening the division. It's just sad that they had to be separate. Well, they didn't have to be stupid British people. But if you take away the geopolitical bluster... <laughs> Your ancestors! All right, okay, <laughs> all right! <laughs> the nukes, the barrier, the trauma of partition, you can still see how much these two countries have in common. Mm -hmm. I'm at a school in Delhi. The students are Skyping oh, with wow. a school mm. in Pakistan. Whoa. Because they're teaching them about history uh -huh. and stuff. Yep. But there's a lot of different languages. I'd want to know like the majority of like India majority is Hindu or no, they were mostly talking about religions, not languages, right? Th that's right. Like Pakistan has probably a, a lot of the similar. I just thought that people in Pakistan primarily speak. Uh, then again, they might, they probably cross over in a lot of ways that people from Pakistan can understand people well, from, from India. Well, from what I've like, heard they is they there's a lot, a lot of languages dialects. in India. Yeah. But I thought maybe new languages would have been formed after oh, the I division. Oh, I don't, I don't no. think so, no. Because this is more modern. What was the year again that this happened? Was it 1947, was it? Yeah, it's not like that, that long ago. Yeah. So, yeah. Ah, do you have a certain snack? And they're like, yeah. 
cricket. Huh? Something that can bring them together. If you remember, the, wasn't it the uh, comedy video the other day where they were sort of poking fun at Pakistan for not uh, having made it to a certain level in, in cricket? So, um, Oh, this comedy sketch? Yeah, it's sort of like yeah. I, I'm sort of pulling some of these pieces together here. Mm -hmm. Because I always used to hear that India, like, you know, when I was growing up, I used to see on the news uh, mm -hmm. that India and Pakistan always had these tensions. And I just never really understood why. So it's really great to be able they to kinda, get some uh, more information. They kind of do and don't. Like now it seems like they've healed or like it's like they have and then at the same time they are sort of in a certain way connected yeah oh yeah and deeply connected mm -hmm. well remember like they are mm -hmm. and there was lots of division it seems but like regardless of the wars like all the stuff they're showing like how the religious places are being respected like in their own right of like the religion that they initially Absolutely. were. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there is a, there is a and mutual like respect with there, isn't there? From Pakistan. Well, I, I remember when the uh, farmer, you know, earlier on in the farmers' protest, mm -hmm. uh, we had some Pakistani singers that were creating some tracks for uh, mm -hmm. the other side and basically saying like, hey, if we could march down there and support mm -hmm. you, we'd do it. And they were really talking about, uh, you know, the deep connection that they both shared. So I knew yeah, that- Yeah, we really uh, need to react to- like Pakistan songs. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah, there's a, there's a whole world of uh, content out there for us to explore. <laughs> These kids are speaking a similar language, and it takes them just minutes to dive into the common roots of their culture. <laughs> oh, it looks good. I'm hungry. This shared identity that these kids are feeling isn't uncommon in India or Pakistan. Same language, same taste, mm. same food. Whereas Hindus and Muslims and Sikhs used to live together, mm. attend each other's mm. social functions, oh, marriages, wow. ev everything. Why this divide now? If you stand mm. in the wall city in Amritsar and you stand in the wall city in Lahore, believe me, the smells, which is a kind of giveaway, are the same. Mm. Yeah. Wow, eh? Yeah. I'm visiting a group of Sikhs coming off the train. They were able to get a visa to go visit this religious site that most have to see through a telescope. Ah. They have to get a visa too. Hey, I guess it's like you think because they're so like they were once like unified, you think they'd be a little bit more I guess with any country. Yeah. There's Can't a lot they just of history go there here. for a certain amount of time? Like how long are they staying? Like it's interesting how they get they have to get like a whole visa. Like aren't we allowed to say go to the States for a couple of weeks or even more, or like yeah. a month or yeah, yeah. months. With our Canadian uh, driver's with, licenses, yeah, without, I understand. Actually, that no, may have you need changed. A passport. That may have changed. Yeah, you I think need we need a passport. passport. No, it used to be the case that no, you didn't. But you don't need like a visa. You don't have to like apply to get like a visa and all that. You can just stay for a certain amount well, of time. I'm a little ignorant as to the difference between a visa and a passport. So, let's, what? Uh, let's see. Here. Sean. What, what's what, explain Are away, Alyssa? Please uh, explain to me the difference between a visa and a passport. Are you serious? Yeah, I don't really, I'm, yeah. I don't know the complete full, full like specifics of visas, but there's like, there's like a work visa or like a travel visa. It's just like, okay, you can yeah, only okay. be there for a I certain amount. I just hadn't really thought of, about it. I get it now. You can yeah. only be there for a certain amount of time with just your passport. Like yeah, it's yeah. because you're not, you can't stay. It's, it's like a long-term thing. So you can get a visa for like two years. So you can be there. You're not like a citizen. Gotcha. Okay. And then there's like resident. It there's took like, me a minute. It's not something I think about like, all the time. You can be like a permanent resident. I have to restart the camera. Are you sure it's going? Because you clicked that button pretty yeah, quick. I did. Are you? Sorry, I had some caffeine today and I'm hardly any sleep last night. Hey, you're cranky. I'm really on edge. I'm just shocked that you don't know. Well, I do. I, I like the general I, I, that you think of visas like a passport. It was like, something what? that I subconsciously knew. And I would maybe make the argument that based on your explanation, a visa is almost like a type of passport, but perhaps more particular no. to uh, certain rights no, like working you don't have to, and living. A passport is just like 
a birthright of everyone that you, you don't have to like, unless maybe you're a criminal, but even that, like, I feel like everyone's entitled to a passport, but a visa has to get approved. So I'm just, I thought, oh, they should just be able to go there with their passports. All right. Wow, waited their whole life. They look thrilled. So with all these cultural similarities, all these happy faces, shared interests, how do you explain this? Mm. Mm -hmm. Like the wars and stuff? Yeah, the animosity. Who poisons people's minds. Hindustan Wow, those are strong words. The divide is created, nurtured, fostered because it suits a certain politics. Over the years, there's their prime on minister both sides of Pakistan tension with the other side to stoke feelings of nationalism. Whoa. That's Modi. What's his deal? Yeah, well, I don't know. I really don't know. I think there's uh, a lot more videos we need to see to really uh, understand what's going on here. Those are definitely strong words and uh, very aggressive words as well. Back here at this viewing platform, there's construction I noticed that. everywhere. For years, the Sikhs have lobbied for easier access to their holy site. And after years, the two governments finally agreed to build a little notch into this border. A corridor that will allow Sikhs to freely access their site without Out a visa. visa. Good. These four kilometers will restore a small part of what was once the Sikh heartland. But for millions of Indians and Pakistanis who continue to live with the repercussions of the traumatic events of 1947, this fortified and volatile border remains unchanged. If anything, it's getting thicker. 70 years later, the shadow of partition continues to divide families, halt trade, cut connections, stop cooperation, instill fear, promote hatred. And the people who live in its shadow, on both sides, old and young, continue to live with this division that's superimposed upon their history of deep connection. Well, uh, Brits. This episode of Borders focused on one well, story of partition, uh -huh. the story of the division of Punjab. We can only cover so much with Borders, and we have to choose a very narrow story and focus in on that. If you're interested in learning about other conflicts and borders that have to do with religion, you should check out a documentary series called Holy War. It's on mm. a website called Curiosity. Oh, Street, interesting. Which is a that repository would be, of documentaries. Really yeah, I've been sort of keen to check out this service. For mm. $2.99 a month. You can get unlimited access, oh, but because you're a Borders fan, you can get the first US 31 dollars? days for free if you go to curiositystream.com slash borders and enter the promo code borders. Mm. Curiosity Stream is the exclusive sponsor of this episode of Borders, mm. and while they don't influence our editorial process or what the video is about, they do support us, and so I'm very grateful for that. Thank you, Curiosity Stream. You should mm. definitely check them out. Wow. Another really well put together uh, Vox, uh, I guess, documentary, I was if you say, will. say, well, more of the story. The Brits fucked it up again. Screwed everything up. <sighs> there's, a, there's a lot of and history here. And then just here. ditched. We're no. like, oh, it just so annoys me, though. It just annoys me. I'm just so annoyed today already. And it's like this guy who's just like, this random lawyer has mm. knows nothing about anything. Mm. He's just like, oh, it's just like doodles on a map. Yeah, yeah. Is like I'm done. Throws away the pen. Ditches. Yeah. yeah. The rest of the whatever monarchy or the they just leave. And I'm still like, Bye. quite uncertain as to why they felt that division <sighs> needed to be made yeah. as they were on their way out. So they maybe, didn't explain that. Maybe maybe you guys can suggest another video for us to watch so we can learn more about that. If you enjoy watching this with us and. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> learning <laughs> more about uh, India and Pakistan, well, then we're going to ask you to click that subscribe button. Click the little bell icon. Choose all from the drop down menu so you can get updated every, every time, time we upload, upload a new video. video. If you just video, please let us know by clicking the thumbs up button and leaving your thoughts in the comments down below. Uh, keep sending stuff to the email. I already talked to us gmail.com. Sorry, we are... Sean's just we're real way busy behind. with work, so we're behind. So but we appreciate every email we get. We also have a subreddit now too, so you can go to reddit.com forward slash r forward slash internet rabbit hole daily. And if you love us a whole lot, we've got some ways that you can support the channel by sending us a few dollars. Every dollar counts, guys. We love doing this sort of thing, but there is that nasty sort of financial piece and uh, we appreciate all the uh, donations that have been coming in. It helps a whole mm -hmm. lot. This is Internet Rap Hold Daily. IRH, sign it off. Bye, guys. Bye-bye, guys.